Welcome to my ranch, ranch, no advice on finance Spin the wheel and take a chance, get an NFT and a little education The system got under tow, that knowledge is flotation You wanna learn? Well you came to right place You pump an AMC, might get slapped in the face Get your due diligence, know who the villain is Don't be a sheep when the shepherd's carnivorous So come learn, laugh and maybe you win big And listen up y'all, the wheel is not rigged Everybody get a chance in the live chat Kyoto spin wheel, you win just like that Retail fight pack and this retail winning Y'all just wait man, this is just the beginning All fellow simians, GME group singing the truth We just chilling, infinity pool swimming So welcome to my ranch ranch A lot of knowledge but no advice on finance Don't even need pants, you can tune in naked like Kenny the Mayo Man Internet's most hated, don't wanna lose your money Then it's time for you to listen If you're ignorant, invest in AMC is superstition The stream about ready, they told us to don't dance I do what I want Welcome to my ranch ranch, welcome to my ranch ranch Welcome to my ranch ranch, welcome to my ranch Welcome to my ranch ranch, welcome to my ranch ranch, welcome to my ranch, ranch. Welcome to my ranch, ranch. Welcome to my ranch all right, guys, welcome back. Welcome back to Morant's Rants. Plenty of good information, a little bit of motivation, a whole lot of truth. No financial advice, guys. Killing it today. If you guys look at the stock today, we can look at GameStop, Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC, you name it, Mullen Automotive. They're all trash out there except for GameStop. But right now, as I look at it, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the chart just for you. Look at these stairs we're walking up. If you had no feet, no arms, and a rail, you could still make it up this mountain right here. And this is called GameStop. Look at it stepping out every day. We are actually on the five-minute chart right here looking healthy. For all my guys out there on TikTok, they're up here at the top. TikTok, welcome to Morant's Rants. I know you guys don't know my show. You don't know who I am. You all think I'm Rico Knows. I'm not that dude. Rico doesn't know stocks. He doesn't know GameStop. He doesn't know what it is. But I will tell you this. I'm teaching TikTok what it's all about, guys. So all you guys out there on YouTube, the thousands and thousands of people that know exactly what GameStop is, Versus a couple of 5,000 over here that I'm teaching. We'll go from there. We got to start somewhere. And I started about two weeks ago on YouTube. I mean, on Twitter. Oh, my goodness. On TikTok. And we're killing it. So sorry about that. Everyone else, I know we're talking about Bed Bath & Beyond. It was announced today that it can go gone, going, going, gone at any second now, any day. So I'm just going to look here and laugh. Yes, this is my victory lap. This is me dancing on the ceiling, dancing on top of graves. That's what I'm doing today. Because Bed Bath & Beyond didn't want to listen then. They're not going to listen now. I told all these investors that damn stock was going to zero. And it's not that, oh, we can see the demise of the company and, oh, it's going to fall down. You don't understand shareholder equity and what they don't have. They are upside down. They have a shareholder deficit, meaning they could give you nothing back. What exactly did people think was going to happen here? Who did they think was going to save them? What sh knight and white shining armor was going to come through? No one. No one wants to buy a dead company. No one wants to buy debt. Certainly not right now in inflationary times. And no one wants to buy these interest rates as high as they are. So when you're borrowing money right now, just call it the kryptonite for your business and your business plan. If your business plan is to sit on your cash and wait for this market to subside, well, guess what? I'm going to show you who GameStop is. But until then, all these cats that say they're in growth companies, growth stocks, and not understanding value versus all of it, well, guess what? They're broke. And now these executives are going to be looking for new jobs. Pay attention clearly, guys. Connect the mother effing dots. Listen, a CEO, a CFO, a COO, all of them, they're all going to need jobs coming out of Bed Bath & Beyond, and I'm going to follow them. I'm going to follow them like my brother does players on the transfer portal. I'm going to find out where these guys go and what companies they get planted on because they're already bad executives at this company. What makes you think they're going to do a great job somewhere else? And we all know these are Apollo plants, and this is not a legend. Okay, private equity plants are known. They plant their seeds, they maximize their value, and then they exit. And this is their exit liquidity right here on a short versus Bed Bath & Beyond that they never have to return, and yet they paid off pumpers. And you guys don't know that they're paid off pumpers. Guys, YouTubers like PP Seeds or anyone else out there and that gaggle fuck of dumbasses out there putting out misinformation, yes, they're costing people thousands of dollars, if not millions. And why? Because they don't give a shit. Because they care about a click and an affiliate link. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the channel. I have no affiliate links. I have nothing for you to click. It's just information and it's yours for free. Not behind a paid wall. Nothing. I've been doing this shit too long. Well, welcome to it. I'm a little heated about it. You should be too. If people are losing money, why are we not heated? If I see an old lady getting robbed, why am I not going to stop it from happening? That's exactly what I'm doing. Call me Batman. Paint me up in fucking black and white. I'm going to jump out and they're robbing. Oh no, they're not robbing my sidekick. They're robbing, robbing you. That's what they're doing. That's who they are. And I'm the only one. I'm the only one saying, hey, yo, Jenny's got a gun. Yeah, 1989. That was a good song, by the way. 
I got to play that more on my soundtrack now that I know about it. I'm feeling kind of funny. I'm feeling good this Friday. I cut the grass this morning. I went to Dave and Buster's last night. Let me tell you how real I am at Dave and Buster's. That shit might as be a playground for adults, which it is. But you want to tell me I'm going to be in competition with other little uncoordinated idiots? Hey, yo, shoot the ball in the basket. Whew, I'm going to kill you. Hey, yo, play dodgeball. Throw the ball over here. I'm going to beat you down. I'm a gamer for life. What do you think I'm going to do right now? I'm about to shoot up everybody, everything, and drive the cars eh, on the video games. And then it was all you can eat, all you can drink. Whoo, boy, part of the VIP process. Hey, I walked out of there feeling about 10 pounds fatter. So there I was, cutting the grass this morning with Pops, talking about the channel. My dad, okay, me, my dad, and my brother. We're in a joint, in a, in a conference call this morning. We're talking about our channels. We're talking about the growth of them and how we plan this shit out. And what's it worth? What's the value of our network? And, and nobody knows this stuff the way my brother and I think, Okay. And we start talking about it. Are you worth it? There's 10 free memberships right there to the chat. Go ahead and join it. Enjoy it. Go with it. But let me tell you guys something. Thank you. Shout out to Ruben, by the way. Having a hell of a month, apparently. I'm going to tell you guys something. My brother and I, we decided to attack the internet with information and a product. And it was that we were going to grasp two different sectors, you know, sports and finance. And sometimes they mix. So sometimes we do videos together and or explain things together. And when that happens, then the people say, oh, wait a minute, they are twins and they are separate. Because you guys seen the videos where like Rico reacts to my reaction or I react to his. But these cats, these new guys that come around right now, the new TikTok guys, they have no idea what GameStop is. They have no idea what private equity means and where it's been. They don't know what connect the dots are. They don't know who Ryan Cohen is. All they know is what you feed them and what you tell them. All you know is the movie's coming out. Dumb money. It's out today and it's out next week on Friday everywhere. And everyone, no, dumb money. Where GameStop would happen two years ago, two and a half years ago, January 28, 2021, the stock market got halted. Oh, yeah, man, that was cool. Uh, never happened again. Uh, jackass. It's still happening. Oh. Somebody says, I guess they are twins. They sound the same. I don't sound like him. Mind you, I'm the better looking twin. I have hair. I have a chiseled physique. I, I walk around, you know, proportionately. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's how I can put it. And what do I mean by that? It's because Rico got a big-ass head, bro. I don't know if you guys know this, but in the military, they give you caps, right, your size. They go, hey, Top, how big's your head? Big. How big you need a headgear? Big. That was it. Anyway, shout-out to the 10 people who just got free membership for the channel. I appreciate you and all the support, guys. You know what it is. But I will tell you this. When I look at... We're going to go down the stock. Okay, we're going to go down the line because I was watching Connecting the Dots this weekend and I was like, this is crazy. So let's go down the line and I want to take my time. I want to give you a history lesson into everything we look at. So first, we're going to talk about yellow. Now, if you guys don't know what yellow is, it's Y-E-L-L-Q. What are the chances that it ends with the Q? Whenever a stock ticker ends with a Q, guys, that means they're restructuring. They file for bankruptcy. They're donezos, and they're going to come out of it with a new ticker, and it might even be Y-E-L-L, -L, reversed, but any original shareholders of Y-E-L-L-Q are not going to have any equity in the new stock ticker. It's done. Okay, so if you're sitting here playing in the dirt and in the mud, remember the thing I tell you guys, pigs play in the mud, but pigs like it. I hope you do too. $1.81 a share on yellow. When we look at yellow and we go back to this company, you're going to go back from 2016 when it was $21 a share. Now, there's been enough bullshit happening to go from there all the way down to 40 cents. 99% losses here in this company. But why? Because private equity is involved. You know, Apollo bought out a loan on this company, I believe in 2019. And when that happened, they weren't, they weren't ready for the pandemic. But they were because they pounced. And the U.S. government came in and gave these guys a buyout. And all I did was buy them more time to do exactly what you see. You see this right here? This is called rinse and repeat. All of this. This is diminishing returns, DR. You're not getting back what you originally put in, and they're going to keep sucking it out of you. Say, pause. They're going to suck it all out of you guys. I'm going to get you all the way down to where they are right now. Look at this shit. I don't know who believes in this. I don't know who thinks you're coming out of this. Apollo owns this. Look at the insiders, guys. Susanna. Martinez, if you know who she is, she's a former governor of New Mexico. All of her funding was Apollo and Bank Capital. We know this. The reason why she got elected because they actually hired Jay McCleskey. And what did he do? He did a whole campaign to get her hired. He's helped everyone get hired. We're talking about Ducey in Arizona State. His dad, Michael Ducey, is on the board of directors for Apollo. 
You're talking about all the executives that are out here. They're either hiring Jay McCleskey or his wife, Nicole, and they're both double dipping on you because that's what private equity does. Does They plant people where they need them. And in this case, on Yellow's board of directors, oh, they planted them good, guys. And they have the same chairman of the board of Yellow board of directors is also on the board of directors for FTX. That's right. FTX, the failed crypto company that went under for commingling funds. And you know what, what that is, SBF and the Sam Bakeman Freed, the billions of dollars that are missing. You guys go ahead and get the catch my drift here. Yellow direct ties. What a terrible stock to own. I pray you guys run. And if you guys ever want the full story on yellow, go to YouTube. It's called Connect the Dots Part 30. I watched it last night and I said, hmm, I did okay on that one. It felt good when I made it. I still remember it. Anyway. They said, it sounds like him because it is him. They still think I'm Rico. Anybody out there want to slap the taste out these kids' mouths? I ain't Wico. Rico's nickname is Wico. I don't know if you guys know that. We call him Wico in the family. That's what we call him, Wico. He's the weekster. That's the way it goes down. Everyone else in the chat, thank you guys so much. I want to see dumb money this weekend, but not, not playing here. Might have to stream it instead. Jesse, I'm just telling you, I'm not paying a single dollar for that ticket. After what I saw with the director. Okay, so there's two females that actually wrote the, the story, the screenplay, and directed the film. These two females are the ones pushing out the film. But the original writer from the book, the Anti-Social Network, he wrote the book. He grifted off the whole movement, right? This this writer. And the producers for the movie are the Winklevoss twin, the Winklevoss twin, wherever the hell they are. The Facebook kids, the tw those twins from Harvard. The Roe guys, the Robo guys, the guys who got stiffed out of Facebook. So they're part of the production crew. The movie, The Social Network, was part of the production crew. So it's the same producers from those type of movies to this movie, which is great, which is great. You want to think about parallels for the GameStop movie? Think about, think about it like this, okay, which I'm good with it, dumb money. But the guy, Ben Matzeritz, whatever the hell his name is, the guy I called out today in one of my short videos on YouTube, that guy is blocking people in the community of GameStop for no reason at all. I didn't say one word to the kid. I go to his, his page, and I'm blocked. I was like, what the hell? My name is GameStop Echo, and I've never said one bad thing about the movie. Nothing. All I said was, I hope they're ready for part two. And this guy's grifting over the whole crowd. And from what I can read in the screenshots, because Jason sends me everything, Jay goes, yo, Morantz, um, you know he's a supporter of hedge funds. He called Gabe Plotkin one of the smartest, richest men in the world. He's, a, he's an all-star. And Ken Griffin, the same thing. I'm like, yeah, I know Gabe Plotkin, the one who just jacked Michael Jordan for his basketball team. Yeah, I know who he is. But I'm not a fan of them, and that's how it goes down. How's did you get internet in in your favela? What the hell does that mean? I have no idea what you're saying there. Uh, I don't know what it means. I don't speak English. I speak English, not Spanish. I don't know. Okay, everybody's good in the chat. We're good there too. Okay, yeah. Oh, the other part about this, guys, just so we're clear. Um, you know that movie, The Social Network. It's the Facebook story. I, I see so many things that exist in that movie that are going to exist in the same movie right now about dumb money. But here's the true story. In the movie, the Facebook story, I always, I always think about this. They say, you know what? We're not going to monetize on Facebook. We're going to keep it free for the public. We're not ready to monetize. And everyone knows when Facebook monetized. It was in 2012, 2013 when they went public. And they finally went public, and they had all the backing in the world, and look at the stock now. It went from $30 a share the initial day of IPO. Ten years later, it's a trillion-dollar company. It's bigger than a billion-dollar dream. It's a trillion dollars, right? What's cooler than a million dollars, Justin Timberlake says? A billion dollars. What's cooler than a billion dollars? A trillion dollars. So when they made that movie, do you think they would have ever dreamt that, that Facebook, Meta, would have turned into a trillion-dollar company? I'd say no. When you make this movie of dumb money and you tell the story of GameStop and you think it's just a $6 billion company, can you ever imagine that it gets to a trillion? I can. That's my movie. That's when I write it. That's what I follow. So good job with the movie, guys. But just remember, I'm thinking 10 years from now when it's a trillion dollar movie, trillion dollar company. And that's where I'm at with it. So shout out to those guys making these movies and getting people excited. But I hope people actually get their their eyeballs onto what GameStop really is, the balance sheet itself, but we're going to talk it all out today. I will go down that list, but let's talk about Walmart right now. That's the one I want to talk about. Walmart's one of the strongest companies in the world, guys. We know this. The number one retailer in the world. Don't let anyone fool you. 
They're going to tell you the stock is at an all-time high, which it is at an all-time high right now, guys. I get that. 165 a share, plenty of stock splits and, and you know all the nonsense, but there's only 2 billion shares of this company. And with that being said, 2.69 billion shares of Walmart are available. But you know that shareholder equity states that Walmart has one of the greatest positions when you buy a share. 19% of that share is equity. Just know that, guys. You're, when you buy a share of Walmart, 19% of it is equity. So you're getting nuts to nuts, cash to cash, right? About $30 a share, phenomenal number, and I couldn't be more happy for them and what they're doing. When you're looking at GameStop, GameStop's $4 a share equity, and that means that you're getting around 20 25%, depending on the price of GameStop per day, right? Uh, today at $18, so you're getting around 20%. 20, yeah, somewhere in that range. I, I'm not good at math. We all know this. Right, I'm not good at math, sure. Okay, anyway, um, my point is, Walmart's a phenomenal buy. I know you're at the top of the cycle, it's there, but I'm just explaining to you, the reason why shareholder equity exists matters. Okay, just for everyone out there that wants to know, like, I talk about it a lot because if you look at Bed Bath Beyond and you look at um, AMC movie theaters, and they have a shareholder deficit. You know, that limits them on what they can do. They can't uh, do share buyback program because they don't have any equity to actually buy. They can't leverage off of it. They can't manipulate the flow any longer. They can't go ahead and do a share offering and offer more shares and dilute their dilute their position even more. Uh, some people can, but then they're going to stay upside down, kind of like what AMC is doing. And when you do it that way, and you're already in a really net negative position, you, you have no wiggle room. Any mistake in your company goes under. Go look at Bed Bath & Beyond. They put themselves there. Go look at Kohl's right now. They're putting themselves there, and they're leveraged. When you look at Home Depot, all right, and I think we're going to talk about Home Depot in a minute, or maybe we will, maybe we won't. Yeah, I probably do. I'll just tell you to you like this. The more equity you have, the shareholder equity you have, the more gymnastics that you can do as in as in running a company, a corporation. So the corporation can expand and stretch based off of that equity position. Go look at what you can't do if you were AMC and or if you were Bed Bath & Beyond. You couldn't do that. You already stressed yourself out. So there it was. Um, no, uh, you think Rico's the smartest man alive. No, Rico's not the smartest man alive. Um, I don't know who is, but it's not either of us. Uh, but, you know, that code. Tupperware. Tupperware. Now, if you guys remember, we talked about this a couple of months ago. I told you that Tupperware was getting pushed out to you, and it, it was happening, and they were doing a pump and dump right here. This actually happened in August, in July, late July, early August. This pump right here. This was the Tupperware pump from the very bottom of 61 cents. I told you that it was the ground. I told you it can go nowhere but bankruptcy. It's done. It's out of here. And, of course, people are like, what do you mean? There's a pump happening right now. But go look at these pumps. That pump you saw was absolutely nothing, right? You, you saw a stock that used to be $60, $70 a share, and now it was all the way down to $0.61. Cents. So you lost 99% again. But it pumped up to $6, and people were trying to tell me this is it. This is the pump. I had to hear every YouTuber out there tell me the bullshit, and I told you exactly what it was. Private equity, terrible position. They're leveraged. They're done. Look at this stock. All the way back down to $1.90 from $6. You've lost everything out of it. This is essentially the DR that you see. Just pumping it out of you. Guys, every single stock you see, with the exception of GameStop on these meme stock pumps, uh, GameStop is not hit rock bottom. They don't ever get it past a certain point. You know, when they turned off the buy button and it went stale for 14 days, they still couldn't get it under $40. Because no one was going to sell. No one was selling. And that was pre-split. So that puts you at around $10 a share with current price point. They can't even get it under 15 And they're trying. Trust me. I've seen it all. They try. They try to short, short, short. No volume. Attack, attack. And we just keep buying. So you can imagine the pressure that's on them once GameStop actually produces a positive number. Which they already have. People just don't know it. So this is Tesla. Top of the mountain Tesla. I know everyone wanted to get involved down here at 100 bucks a share right here, and that was at the beginning of this calendar year. And, of course, it's run 3x since then. It's all the way up to $271 from $100. Uh, touched out at $298, $301. Um, 
yeah, it has still room to run. It's going to run. It's good company. It's run correctly. But this is stock that you're going to have to hold for a very long time. You're at the top end of what the platform is. We They stepped completely out of this out of this drain that they were in. But you got to remember how they did it. They announced a stock split. They announced the S&P 500. This was the S&P 500, guys. You see this movement here? They announced S&P 500 in December of 2020. When they did it this route, boom, they were gone. I think it was December of 2020, if I can remember. You guys got to help me with that. I think it is. It's this one. The boom, S&P 500, and then look at the monster that it became over the next year and a half, two years. So, yeah, we're playing in this realm here. But if you were anywhere over here, if you were XBit or anyone else in the chat, then you're out there. You're, you're hanging out with your balls out. So Tesla's doing great. I'm... I'm not going to buy it, but I'm happy for the people that do. This is not the retraction you think it was. This retraction here last year when it came all the way down, the SPY, we're talking about the SPY right now, the whole S&P 500. Um, it came down to around 340. I saw it. I was like, I wanted to touch 320, 318. That's what I wanted. I want a real retraction. So it was a fake out. There will be a bigger fall. There will be a bigger fall for the stock market. It will happen. It happens all the time. Do you see this? I'm going to show you guys something. These are the falls of the market. Whether they go all the way up, like they did in 2000, dot-com bubble, drop all the way down over the next three years, that is a massive fall from 122 all the way to 60. That's a 50% drop on the whole stock market. Then they build themselves back up to get to the financial crisis of 2007, 2008. Look at this. 2007, you thought you hit it. You thought you got there. You went, you fell down. But 2009 picked you all the way back up. So from 2007 to 2009, that was the true fall off of the stock market. That was the housing crisis. That was the financial crisis. But now look at this steady grind of borrowing free money up and to the right. That's the way we do the metrics. And all they did was just keep it going. They just moved the risk. And these little dips, these little hiccups are nothing. This is the pandemic. This right here is the pandemic for the stock market. Yeah. Do you know why it recovered and went crazy as all-time highs? Because $6 trillion of free money went to every Tom, Dick, and Harry, and they started playing the market. So nothing has really corrected on down. This is all fake and propped up right now, what you're sitting on, and that's the world we live in. An inflationary time, macroeconomics will cripple someone someday. It might be in 2024. The only reason why I say that is because we know that sleepy Joe Biden's not going to win the election. So what you're thinking is whoever gets into the office will then get blamed for the economy that they put in front of you. So if it's a Republican, they're going to drop this baby. They're going to tank the market all the way. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be suicide for a lot of people. But if you're betting on the long versus their short, <laughs> their short is GameStop. Their long is AMC. Do you get it? They actually shorted Bed Bath & Beyond to Oblivion. They just made a shit ton of money. Now you're looking at what's going to happen to AMC. AMC is going to go bankrupt. They're going to cripple them, and there's nothing you can do. The only last man standing is GameStop, and GameStop's going to win. It's going to win because I'm going to show up every day, and I'm going to keep making videos. That's just the way I do it. Uh, I hope you guys pay attention. So it says here, there is um, just got 2 million sell of industrial investor last week, a new chef medical officer. Well, good job for you. How do you do this in sports coverage? I don't. Rico doesn't know this. DJ... What's up, DJ? How you doing, man? Out there at uh, Joshua Tree. I've been watching you on TikTok. Good job, DJ. I see you around. Don't worry. We're on YouTube right now, DJ. Got you. Uh, I'm not Rico Knows. You know, my wife goes, how do you, how tired do you get, babe? Just saying the whole show. I'm not Rico Knows. I'm not Rico Knows. Yeah, I guess. All right. Here's the next stock. Rod Altsman. It's your stock, baby. It's all you. <laughs> you guys remember the video I made? I told everybody, avoid this shit. <laughs> how right was I? Hey, by the way, Rod and those crew and that crew at uh, PlayboyDD.com. It's a uh, PLBYDD.com. That group of investors have been buying Playboy since 2021. Okay, look at the price they paid. They were paying fifty dollars a share when they were pumping these bags onto people, and they came down. Oh, I can't believe it! They bought it back up. Hey, they've been tanking it, and though they took their whole following, they took their whole identity. And they put it onto a website thinking they were going to catch a movement as in to get people to buy into this shit. Let me tell you how bad this stock is. Their little videos came out here in August. This is when they put out their videos, guys. I, I swear to you. Go look at it. It's on Twitter. 
And look at what's happened to them since. They have been bodied, bodied from 188 all the way down to a dollar. They've lost almost 40%, 80%, 60% of their, of their price. They're garbage. This is a terrible company. I looked at the balance sheet. I looked at every aspect of Playboy. I did a connecting the dots video of it. And all it is is them trying to put off their bags on you. So whenever you see investors, hedge funds, guys putting out pub pieces, paying for that editorial line, just remember those guys are paying to offset their offload their bags onto you, the unsuspecting. So if you're reading these articles and they sound too good to be true, they are. You need to do your due diligence, go in there, get do your own DD, start reading the balance sheets. And when you read the balance sheet for Playboy, it was a no-brainer. It was a, hey, let me run the other way. And that's what happened. So it says, U.S. Marshal Service, he was, uh, not me, I was a military police officer. Big difference. Just make a sign saying Rico is your brother and not you. Um, yeah, the, my sign is, I have hair, that dude's bald. All right, there you go. Hey, Playboy. I don't touch it. I don't touch it. All right. Here's everybody's favorite. Um, I still got to read the chat on YouTube, so I'm getting there. Marantz, if we get market crash, GME is going to crash harder. I hope, Leo Lemon, I hope it does crash so I can buy more of it. I'm not afraid of it. Taylor Swift can't date me. As always, you go backwards. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know about him. Marantz dreaming of, Gen of GameStop and the S&P 500. Oh, come on, man. Come on. Dart doesn't want to date Taylor Swift. I don't either. I don't want to date her. I want to marry her. She's got a billion bucks in the bank, bro. Don't judge me. I can be bought. I can be bought. That's all I can tell you right now. Um, and I, my wife would be like, yo, you need to go over there and do that. We need that money. I'm like, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. A hundred percent on the political view. Oh, it's going to happen, Green. It's going to happen. I don't care who gets in office. They're going to tank this bad boy and blame it on that administration for the next four years. We're going to be living a cold life till about 2028. And, but not me. I'm not. I have a job. I do well. I put everything away, and I'm putting into GameStop. I think I'm going to be great. I know. But anabolic steroid here, he's going to be against it. Hey, get more of those steroids in your veins there. Okay? go Keep going to the gym, bro. You won. All right? When you look in the mirror and you see veins, just know you won. All right? Good job, man. Keep lifting, though. I don't, I don't understand dudes who go to the gym. I don't. Have you guys seen these guys at the gym? I'm going to ask you guys. Have you ever seen them? They walk in. They do a lap with their bag on their shoulder. Just like looking around, looking around, seeing what machines aren't being. Oh, no, you use machines? Oh, oh, no. Free weights, buddy. Free weights. Are you done? And then they go to the bathroom. They go to the showers, right? And they sit there and they just like open up, let their shit just hang out everywhere. Walk around to the mirror. Now, I know you guys never been, and for the ladies out there. If you've never been inside a male, a male bathroom at the gym, it's absolutely disgusting. It's gross. I feel like I'm getting herpes every time I walk in. I'm just like, yo, get me out of here. But when you do walk in, just know there's always going to be some old dude walking around with his junk hanging out. He's looking in the mirror, trying to flex, trying to eagle up. And you're just like, yo, man, can I just wash my hands, dude? Like, and he's trying to wash his dick in the sink or whatever he's doing. I don't know. But... They get a little too friendly. I walk away. Okay, can you give me the towel? No, bro. I just keep walking. Anyway, this is a true story. This all happens out there. And maybe it's just because I would live in Palm Springs, California, and there's some, you know, these gyms are, uh, are yes, they're frequent. So, anyway, ladies at the gym see these dudes. I don't know what these dudes are doing. They do laps. And then you always get the guy. You get the Rico Nose guy walks in. He's, flagging, he's like this. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to that treadmill. And they walk to the treadmill. They got the ear pods in, bro. And they look. And the treadmill's usually in front of a mirror. So that you can see yourself when you're running. You just running on empty. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm running blind. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I don't care if you're going to just stare at my behind. No. So these dudes go in there. They pump it up. They go 10. 10 miles per hour. Boom. That shit's just flying right there. And the feet are just going like a little chipmunk, bro. And right there, huh, huh, huh. And there's Rico, right, trying to hang on, huh, 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 for like a half a mile, just holding it, bro, huh, for three minutes. Huh. And then they jump off, and their legs go, you know, splat. Whew. And they hang on to the sides. They're like, huh. they look to the left and look to the right, make sure people are watching them. Huh. Huh. And they lower the speed down to three, down to three miles per hour. And then they jump off, and then they just walk. 
Then they walk and they act like, hey, man, I'm, this is my workouts. And then when it gets their breath again, all right, crank it up. Running on empty. Running blind. Doing it again, right? Do the splits again. Hang on to the sides. That shit's just going. They're not even walking on the thing. The wheels are just going. Yeah, man, I run five miles today. Look at my time. Shut up, punks. So when he's done with the treadmill, the dudes usually walk around. They really change, man. They have like five different pairs of shoes they wear. They got powder. They got gloves. Then they walk over to the bench, and they want to make sure everybody can see them. I'm about to do this. <laughs> I'm going to do this right now. No, I don't need no spotter. I don't need no spotter. No, I'm good. <laughs> Yelling out loud. I can't take it, bros. I'm going to tell you right now what I do at the gym. I swear to God, I've, I'm there on the machine. Hmm. Hmm. Are we done? Yeah, man, I'm getting hot. You know I don't like the sweat. What the hell am I doing here? Yeah, I could do this shit at home. Damn. Huh. Hey, babe, can we go? <laughs> That's how I do it. At the, bro, I don't go to the gym. I don't. It's a waste of money and a waste of time. But I've seen dudes like Rico running full speed on the treadmills, bro. And they're good for 30 seconds. I swear to you. Well, well, next time you go, watch that guy. Watch that guy. That's all I'm going to tell you. It's gross. Old balls exploding in the locker room are 100% a certainty. I'm trying to tell you. They're out there, bro. They're just out there in the wind. And they don't care if they're this big or this big. They don't care. The shit's just there. Late but here on two times speed, going to catch up. Marantia Cowboys versus my Jets this weekend. Buckle up. Buckle up. Not only are the Cowboys the number one team in the NFL. The number one defense in the NFL. They're going to win every game they play this year. They will go 17-0 and win the Super Bowl. It's not even close. Don't call me. Don't tell me they're going to have an off week. Don't tell me because of injuries. They're not going to. I don't care. I don't care what happens. They're going to win everything. Remember me. Remember me. Okay, good. I was tripping. Not him. Bro, I'll let you bet on that, Morantz. Yeah, I'm going to bet on that. I already bet on that. Put my reputation on it. Oh, anyway, where are we at? I'm still reading the chat, bro. What happens when shares run out and they can't close positions? What the hell are you talking about? Shares run out. Am I, am I missing something here, Shadow? What are we talking about, Shadow? Matter of fact, guys, don't forget. I always forget. I'm here, though. I'm in the Discord. If you guys are in the Discord, you guys can come hang out with me in the voice chat. Okay? I'm going to put it louder for you. So if you want to go ahead and come into the chat and join me and ask me these silly ass questions, come on in. Do I have Starfield? No, I don't have Starfield. Marantz is hench. There we go. Body weight, calisthenics, and run outdoors. Pretty much, Steve. That's the way I do it. So many balls flapping in the locker room. If anyone wants to see that, yeah, as if anyone, but it's all true. I didn't say one lie today. No, today ever. What's up? Can you explain what it is uh, revolutionary behind the NFT marketplace making less than $100 revenue per day? August, uh, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know because I'm not worried about the NFT marketplace. If that's your focus, if that's where you're trying to get to, you're talking to the wrong guy. I look at the bottom line. And the bottom line is GameStop's profitable. They're going to be more profitable moving forward. And you're on the wrong side of history on this one. If you want to fight an industry... Well, then I would tell you the same people that struggled to understand what the iPod was. Well, what did they do? They lost in the end. Music executives lost. The whole music industry lost. And you're going to lose. NFTs are the future. You just don't know it. Uh, cryptocurrency might be the future as well. But, you know, for all the people who doubted Bitcoin 10 years ago, look at them now. But you're okay, bro. You're going to be all right, August. You just haven't done the homework. Limit can't read quarterly reports. I believe that. Having 10 years of cash making them safe. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Even though the Cowboys are trash, I do like Deuce Vaughn. I hope he turns into Darren Sproles type player. I also heard Dak played well because he was clapping them redhead cheeks. Yeah, if that's his girl, Jesse, I don't know. Um, yeah, we've seen the pic, bro. Dak's taking picture with some OnlyFans girl. Uh, I don't find her cute. I find her a rather gross. Any woman that's like that, I find gross. Let's see, I, you know what I find attractive? I'm just going to tell you right now, bros. If, you, if you're coming out of work 
and you're in business attire, like a cocktail dress, you're dressed semi-professional, business-like, that's more attracted, I'm more attracted to that than to a girl who's half naked hanging out. That ain't doing anything for me. All that means to me is you came out in public looking gross. And chances are you're a parent. And if you're a mother, I wouldn't want my son to be represented by that. That's just me. So I'm just letting you know how it goes for me. Dak, Dak he can knock out all the redheads he wants. I'm good, bro. I'm good. Just don't throw a pick. Lie number one, the Cowboys are going to go undefeated. I, tell me how, Stacks. Tell me how. You know what's lie number one? When the Giants fans told me they had a team. I have just as many points as the New York Giants after week one. Get the hell out of here, bro. I'm doing better on my couch than they are on the team, and they're getting paid millions. To the moon, I agree. If you never go to the gym, what makes you think you know what goes on in one? Steroid, shut up. <laughs> Dude, are you retarded? Like, I'm asking you a serious question. Like, rhetorical question, because I know the answer. But are you retarded? Just asking. You just keep on being a little sheep like most. <laughs> I make my own gym. There you go. Project Burpees. I think he does just by the name himself. She looked pretty ratchet. Yeah, that girl, I know, dude. I know, Stax. Oh, it's bad. I won't. What rich buddy of Adam Aaron, his family wine business, he's about to save it with the money in the AMC. Yeah, when he said wine, I about died laughing. All right, let me tell you about the wine business for everyone out there, okay? Wine business and how you make money. Well, one, it takes decades to perfect it. If you're a wine maker, can you imagine? All you can do is ship off your wine with a private label, and you're going to pay rights. You're going to pay some fees on that. But if you think you're going to tap into the world of wine, the wine industry itself, you are mistaken. What makes you think you're going to have a national brand of wine overnight? It's not even possible. Guys, I come from the wine world. A lot of you guys know this. I'm a level four graduate of the WSET, and that's the Wine Spirits Educational Trust out of the United Kingdom. I went to school for it. I'm trained for it. I've been there at the buyer's office for Costco for it. Costco's the number one wine distributor in the world. Yes, I'm officially trained. I know my shit when it comes to wine. You are daydreaming. If you think that these guys are going to have a wine, oh, yeah, what are you going to do? Red wine, white wine. Okay, jackass. Tell me the varietals. Tell me how seasonal it is. The seasonality of wine in itself. The fact that the varietals get released in February. You're never going to make it. You're never going to make it. You can't just say shit to say shit. I think I'm going into the wine business. Really? How are you going to store it? How are you going to sell it? What are you going to do? You're going to sell Walmart wine? Well, how about this? A box of wine? Is that what you're going to do? Great. Do that shit. I'll still be here. Damn geniuses around here. I have someone here in the Discord in the chat, guys. Right now in the Discord chat, I have Randy Brady Frost. Randy Brady Free Frost, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the channel. What's going on, brother? The floor is yours, bro. I heard you. I see you. How about this, Randy? You interrupt me, okay? Whenever you're ready to talk. But we're going to talk about PayPal for a minute. It was up to $310 a share back when GameStop and AMC were pumping. You guys remember those days? And that was in 2021. What has it offset? All the way down, taking everything out of it. It's trash. It's all the way down to $64, $57 on the low. This is something I would never touch. You know private equity is involved. It's garbage. When I see Marcus LeMay start talking about it and Tony DeNero start talking about it, that's when I run for the mother effing hills. I want no part of it. Thank you so much. NVIDIA, undefeated. Uh, your friends don't know, but Rico knows. Not even close, bro. These guys are still talking about sports. So that dude left the chat, left that. Okay, good. So you didn't want to talk to me, or do you, Randy? R. Brady, Frost, hi. The chat is yours, R. Brady. I, you are not muted. You can talk. What am I going to do? What am I going to do with these guys? They come in. They click on the Discord link. It's there. It's free. It always will be. And now... Bro knows his crushed grapes. I do. I know him very well. The Discord link is not invalid, bro. It's right there. I just clicked on it. I just posted it. And boom. Let's leave the football takes to Rico because Rico knows. Uh, I wouldn't even go that far, bro. Matter of fact, I'm beating Rico and everyone in the whole damn league for his pick'em league. So he has a pick'em on college football and ESPN. His league is number eight in the, in the country, believe it or not. It's the eighth biggest one. Pretty good. 
and I'm right there in the 99.9% percentile for picking. So what does that tell you, bro? I know my shit. And Rico says to me this morning, just keep getting them right, bro. Keep proving me wrong. I say, you mean keep proving you right? That Morant knows? There you go. Do you still play music and dance in your kitchen? I've never played music and danced in my kitchen. Um, that's Rico. That's not me. I'll never play music and dance in my kitchen. That'll never be me. I remember when I first watched Rico on YouTube, he used to dance in his uh, hotel rooms with his socks on so he didn't wake anybody up above and below. That ain't me. No, no, no. Okay, in the chat right now is Al's Wheeler, Arizona Wheeler. Is that your name? What's up, Wheeler? How you doing? Good, baby. Thanks for having me. Yeah, what's going on, man? Uh, well, just started following you about uh, two weeks ago. Um, if I like the information. I just dropped 10000 for some uh, new shares today. There you go. New shares of what? GameStop, baby. Oh, okay, cool. So you understand the story? No, I mean, I've been with it since uh, I got in just after, and I've been holding my shares, uh, 480 shares, so I doubled up today. Just listening to you. Not because of you, but uh, I'm well, interested and I'm following, so thanks a lot. That's cool. How'd you find the channel? Or you just left like that? Uh, oh, you still here? It just popped up one day. I've heard of your name along the way, and I never clicked on it because there's, you know, there was a hundred other people to listen to, and I just never took a chance at, at your uh, page, so... The other day it came up and I clicked on it and uh, it, oh, it was for the GameStop earnings and I, I loved it. That was really cool. I was like, wow, I found the guy I want to listen to. So I <laughs> appreciate you uh, and I'll be uh, I'll be checking in. Thank you. I really appreciate that. So you have a great day. You too. Bye. That means a lot to me, guys. It means, you know, we're out there grinding one brick by brick at a time. And sure, the earnings, if you ever get a chance to watch earnings with me, that's a little different than other people because I'm a true believer and I understand what I'm reading. I know the balance sheet. I know how to interpret it. And when I tell you guys GameStop's going to show a profit, GameStop's going to go positive, GameStop's going to be trailing 12, the TT12, they're actually going to go ahead and show you that they're making money. Uh, it's going to work out perfect for us. So for the investors at GameStop. So I'm super excited for it. It's going to happen very soon. Uh, very soon is 80 days. We are 80 days away from the quarter three earnings report. I believe somebody projected out 81 days. I'll just call it 80 because today's over. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited for that number to come out. I'll be live when I am. It's always fun. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for always uh, supporting me and the channel and the crew and us. We do very well with it. Um, let's see. Look at last week's chart and last month on PayPal. I'm familiar with it. I'm letting you know I'd never touch it. Uh, Brady Frost, you're free to talk if you're there, bro. Now you're muted on the mic, but you can unmute your mic, Brady. There you go. What's up, brother? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I'm just trying to figure my shit out. I'm sorry. No, what's going on? <laughs> hey, I, I just wanted to let you know that I, yeah, I've been tuning into your channel for a while now. Thank you. And I really appreciate you putting out all of your DD, all of the connected dots. Uh, really just helped me. Like, so I've been on this GameStop journey, you know, originally seeing it run up uh to the end of january of 21 thinking gosh you know if i can just hop in here and i'll i'll get a little bump and my roth you know i can sell it for for a little bit and that'll set me up like 20 years down the road and just you know as the journey went on kind of seeing how this whole thing played out like it's really changed how i've approached investing Absolutely. and and who i trust and where i get my news even reading the quarterly reports that, you know, that's ending the, the stock meetings, listening to what the people are saying in the company, what they're choosing not to say and holding, you know, close to their chest. And your channel has really just kind of ramped that up in a lot of ways because it's like, it's just been this whole journey of, you know, I've been in, I'm, we're about the same age and I've been in, you know, investing since I was a young airman. Um, back in the early 2000s. And I, we conversed. I sent you an email once. Oh, cool. You know, I got taken to town with Delta at one point. Oh, I remember and, the email. And then, yeah. Yeah. And then just looking back and being like, oh my gosh, this is a game that these guys play. And retail, the wider retail, has just been treated like cattle, you know, and, and we're just kind of getting farmed. And you would, you know, back in early 2000, I'm thinking, there's no way that Delta's going to go out of business. 
Now, of course, they didn't go out of business, but they went bankrupt and everybody else got rich and my shares went poof. And yeah, yeah Delta's still here. So yeah, I really it, appreciate your connecting the dot series because it breaks a lot of that stuff down. You. Thank you so much for that. You know, um, I didn't have to do it the way I've done it. You know, the, the connecting the dots thing came to me just because I was here sitting here. And I was just like, this is crazy. Like, we got to explain this. Or maybe someone can take the time to untangle the webs that are across America, you know, to uh, facilitate this fraud and or manipulate this, these outcomes. But people see brand names, okay? And they associate that with value. Something like Bed Bath & Beyond. They grew up with it. They see it. They can touch it. They can feel it. But they don't understand what's actually happening to it. That's what happened with Sears. That's what happened with Circuit City. What happened with Bed Bath & Beyond. It's just one step. The, the idea was to pull back the veil. And when I started doing that, I started to tell a story and I just went backwards. And that's where Steve Jobs comes in. You know, Steve Jobs tells you, you can't always see the dots going forward, but you can connect the dots going backwards by, you know, reviewing history. And that's exactly what I've done. And by doing that, it's uncovered a lot. So I learned what not to invest in, what to avoid. But if you can paint this picture for people, then maybe they'll understand the story too. But people are reluctant to even watch, man. So I just appreciate you watching and getting in there. Uh, people are, it's the hardest thing to ever crack into. I hope you know that, you know, finance, because no one's going to trust you. No. And they always yeah, use the I, same I, thing. Like uh, today, I somebody, get that. Yeah, somebody said to me, um, like, this is, somebody said this to me two and a half years ago when I started my channel. And he said, Marantz, when you make a million dollars, then I'll listen to you. And I was like, just blown away because I was like, well, what makes you think I'm not worth a million right now? Like, that's my whole theory. Like, you're judging someone based off of how they look or how they deliver the message, not what's actually being delivered. And so I was like, okay, my net worth is not it has, has increased, you know, dramatically. Sure, but that's because I do it myself. But in addition to that, what makes you think? that you have to wait to see my 1 million for you to make your decision to finally make yours. It's too late by then. You're so far behind. You're on the other side of history on this one. GameStop's going to run away from people. GameStop's going to blow people out of the goddamn water. And by the time they figure it out, they're all going to be Googling up GameStop. They're going to come home from the movie and they're going to Google this shit. And they're going to come here and they're going to see a conversation between Brady and Morantz on a Friday, and they'd be like, you know what? These guys were talking GameStop way back then. Yeah, we were. And we knew exactly what it was because it's $18.41 and only about two and a half million shares traded back and forth today. And you can imagine how much more volume this stock should have, will have moving forward. The brand, the value, it's there. People just don't see it because, hey, they believe what they're told. That's the difference rather than looking it up themselves. So. Thank you so much for believing in the story and believing in us. You know that I don't take all the credit myself. We have a team. We have a squad. And they give me conviction. They pick me up off the floor when I'm feeling down. It's a, it's equal. How are you? I'm doing well, Wheeler. Was Wheeler talking to us or someone else? Sorry, man. I didn't know that you could hear me. I was just listening. Hey, Wheeler, you're doing great. Mute man. me or, or hang up on me. Bro, you're doing <laughs> great. You're saying hi to your cousins. I got you, man. I don't I'm going to just hang it. No, I know. Man. Yeah, I appreciate you, though, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I just wanted to really quick throw something else out there. Yeah, um, right and, here. And I think a lot of the, the folks in the chat probably feel very similar to the way I've felt. And it's kind of interesting that you might not see it <clears throat> just because you're on the creator side. But even just the name of connecting the dots, it, it was it's kind of amazing because I look back and it was like I had these little pieces of information. You know, you're, you're told to get out there. You're told to invest. It's time in the market. It's, hey, listen to <laughs> please don't sue me. Motley Fool. Yeah, um, that's where I started listening to a lot of uh, advice and I got burned time and time again. But I always felt like there was something I was missing. 
And so the Connecting the Dots series for me, and for anybody in the chat or anybody watching later or now or whatever, if you haven't seen that yet, you need to go check it out because Connecting the Dots, for a lot of you, if you've been in the market for a little while just trying to figure this stuff out, yeah. it's going to help you connect your own dots. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's all about private equity. It's all about how these these people get in there and they, they jump into the into the companies and the whole instead of venture capitalism it's vulture capitalism and they right. you can make money out, out of destroying these brands and what's beautiful about it if you're just looking at just what it is like it's horrible but it's also beautiful because suckers like us we think huh kmart's not going anywhere sears man sears robot that's been around forever that's not going anywhere Delta's not going anywhere. You know, we, we have these ideas and it makes us the perfect bag holders. And at the end of the day, somebody else that the company's going to go bankrupt, somebody else going to, they have to auction off whatever is valuable. Somebody's going to get that for a steal. And at the end of the day, private equity gets paid. And yeah. so it's going to start making you look at these things and then start reading like lemon, lemon, start reading the the freaking financial documents you can get in here in the chat <laughs> and argue with everybody all you want man yeah but the documents aren't gonna lie well i'll give you somebody, somebody like uh, gravis here gravis is in the chat right now and for whatever reason he decided to put his hitch along with pp seeds at bed bath and beyond and it says if they fail to watch connecting the dots and i literally have about seven videos for bed bath and beyond and they got deeper and deeper as we go but the story was written and like you literally knew what was happening, how it's going to happen. And it's one of those things where like, I know the stove's hot and I know it's going to burn me, but I want to fill it anyway. And at that point, you're just like, OK, go lose your money. I, I don't there's not, I can't save you. But if you want to educate yourself, people learn from experience and or they learn from reading about other people's experience. So people are going to be reading about your losses very soon. And um, that's just the way it's going to happen. Rance, I have GameStop. Okay. Well, Gravis, you obviously can't spell my name because you spelled it wrong. No one would ever put an O in it. And um, you have GameStop. So, therefore, that makes you, uh, I don't know, invincible? That makes you in the right? No, not at all. You see, just because you have GameStop doesn't tell anyone what you're about and who you are. I'll explain, Gravis. You are a moderator on the PPC show. You come to this chat every day and you hang out on the live stream of my channel, of our channel. You promote and pump an aspect of investing that is not sincere and that has cost people thousands, if not millions of dollars. And you're okay with misleading the public with the identity of, it's okay because I didn't say it. You're guilty by association. The brand that is, anything that kills someone, or depletes them, or robs them, it's an identity of you. It's what you become. There's a reason why people don't drink Bud Light. There's a reason why people don't shop at Target. There's a reason why people get canceled, and or brands get canceled. You, Gravis, you are canceled in this chat and in this room. You see, you can change over and you can paint yourself new. And you can say, you know what, I'm done with that. and I'm walking away from it. But it's the fact that you were ever manipulated in the first place. And or you manipulated people. You're guilty. Period. Point blank. And then you're trying to say, it's okay because I own GameStop. That's like the drug dealers that take the drug money and give it to the poor and say it's okay because I'm helping out the poor. Well, guess what you're also doing? You're killing the people buying your product. That's what we're dealing with here. In the same fashion, you have the biggest drug dealer of them all, for the lack of a better term, by PPC. He's pushing out the, he's the pusher, and he's pushing out this misinformation, and he's gathering people at Crack House to do it on his live stream. And all you guys are in there just smoking out and getting high, and guess what's going to happen to all of you? You're going to reap what you sow. It's biblical at times. You know, North Sodomus, when they write about it and they talk about it, he was actually seeing the future. He saw green fields. He saw fertile land. That's what he saw. 
And if you won the lottery and you made millions of dollars one day, what would you do with it? Would you go and try to manipulate a stock? Would you try to pump it? Would you try to be like uh, Polte and try to get a following out of it and try to grift off the people? Imagine being worth hundreds of millions of dollars and giving people 20, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks and buying favor. Like it's almost biblical what's happening here. And I'm going to tell you right now, I see the green land. I see the fertile land. I see the water. I see the future for what GameStop is. You don't. You just bought some land. You just bought a share. And you think that's going to paint you with who you are. Come here every day and don't be disrespectful. Come here every day and actually speak against what you promote. Then maybe you're someone different, but you're not. I have diversified and well thought out portfolio. Okay, we'll go ahead and blow that theory out right now. A well diversified portfolio and thought out portfolio just means that you do not know how to evaluate businesses. When you look at a portfolio like Warren Buffett, who's been there for 60 years, he buys out whole companies because he evaluates the business, the leadership, and he sees if he can make a profit by doing so. That's how people invest. They pick and choose the securities that they have evaluated. Not entry price points, not where it's going to benefit them for the year or two. It's what can I buy that's going to make a difference forever. I know that I can buy Costco stock. It's not going anywhere. I can buy Walmart. I can buy McDonald's. I can buy Coke. There are things that you can buy, and over time, you will make back your wealth and your fortune. The best part about investing is investing money into securities that outpace inflation. Because if I gave you a million dollars and you put it in the bank and you never spent it, within 100 years, you'd have nothing. Just know that. Depreciation of 2% off of inflationary number, year over year, 2.5%, you eventually have nothing after 50 years. So you can't even imagine what your worth and your value is if you're not doing what's right with your money and your funds. But when you're telling me a penny stock is what you want to promote and push every night because it's cool and fun to cuss and to push out misnarratives to the public, mislead people, all with the idea of, yeah, we could, we might. That's not how you invest. You invest with control. How much of it can you control? How much can you see? And where's the money going? Look at the board of directors. Tell me right now, Gravis. Tell me who's on the board of directors at Bed Bath & Beyond that you trust. Not one person. They don't own it. They don't love it. They don't work for it. That company's gone. You have bought other things where you say that you are diverse. Please tell me the companies you buy into. Tell me your portfolio. I want to evaluate right now. I do. You see, when I talk to people that I hang out with, like in our circle, think about how tight our circle is, yet how big it has become. We have 9,000 investors on this channel. And I know each and every single one. This is not a channel for fame. This is not a channel for pumps. This is not a channel to catch wind and go viral. That is not what we're doing. We literally passed our day over the last three years. We come to the live chat and we talk about our experience and our journey, our financial journey of holding GameStop shares. And this macroeconomic downturn, you tell me when I go to the gas station, it's five fifty a gallon right now in California, how I'm supposed to look at my shares and my stock and be like, I hope I'm making the right investment. Do I do it with conviction? Do I do it with confidence? Absolutely. I feel every dollar I put into GameStop, I'm going to get back tenfold. Tell me what you buy. Sue. You love Sue Gove. Yeah. <laughs> you, you love Sue Gove. I'm sorry, Gravis. Yeah. You said you, say you love Sue. She is like my mom. Yeah. Hey, like your mom. Yeah. I am sorry that you have an abusive mom. Did your Gravis, mom rob you as a you kid? Got. Did your mom tell you to invest into this you house? And don't worry, it's just your first foreclosure. It's okay, we'll figure it out. Like, what exactly do you think you're talking about? You have a million dollars into Apple. Like, why do I have to hear these guys every day? 
Marantz, you've been sitting on a stock for three years and you still dollar cost averaging. Absolutely. You either are clueless or went to interposition or the stock is shit. Uh, let's just go with both. I'm clueless and not Alicia Silverstone and the stock is shit. So why are you worried about it? What I'm curious, steroid, is you've been coming to this chat for three years talking shit to a YouTuber all day long. What do you do that's so productive with your day that I'm missing out on? And oh, by the way, I'm early. I'm not wrong. I'm doing great. <laughs> and I don't know how to evaluate a position. Have you been hanging out with me? Prove it in the Discord. Post it. I'm banned in the Discord. You should be, Gravis. You should be banned in the Discord. I mean, I'm down 20K on GameStop. Can I blame Morantz? You could. You could if you need to sell tomorrow. Blame me all you want. Call the cops. Call your congressman, by the way. Morantz, it's a day trader. Uh, he's more of a Warren Buffett of GME. Thank you so much, Green's Garage. I am, and uh, and I will be, till the day I drop. Are you ever going to have the conspiracy theorist YouTuber you like on the live stream? Caesar Hands, I don't know. I don't know. Apparently, he watches the show. He watches the channel. Uh, he's doing fine. He posts good videos. That's why I post him. Where do I start really learning about this stuff, Morantz? Peaky, where do you learn about investing and, and what we're doing? So this whole channel, if people ever knew the origins of the channel, what it's all about, you know, initially it was GameStop and why I love GameStop, why I hate AMC, the investment, because they're liars and they're a snake. And yes, I was correct on all that stuff. But this year, I started doing a series called Connect the Dots. And Connect the Dots was a series that we put together with a lot of homework. And it basically paints the picture of what America is today, uh, what private equity is, what leverage buyouts are, what bootstrap, bootstrap deals are, and how companies play the part. Like, let me give you this, this like little bit of history here. There's a company called KKR, right? Henry Kravitz, George R. Roberts, and Jerome Colbert, Jerry Colbert. And these three dudes started out from Bear Stearns and they were partners. And when they did that, they started out with 10 grand a piece um, from the cousins who are Henry Kravis and George R. Roberts. And Jerry Kohlberg, their boss at Bear Stearns, actually put up 100 grand. So they started out with 104, 120 grand, I'm sorry. The company's now worth $700 billion, like assets under management. Can you imagine? Like these guys were perfect. But there was this thing called, um, there was this oil deal back in the day. And it was called 25 for 33, okay? So for 25% of the investment, they were going to get back 33% of the profits. As long as you gave up 25% of the initial investment, you would take home 33% of the, of the profits. And the reason why they did this ratio is because people that were putting money in, they didn't have it all, right? So when these guys started doing deals in the 60s, they were like, wait a minute. It was like 68, 69. They're getting ready to do this deal. But they couldn't even put up the 25% that was needed. They were broke. So they put up 20%. And that's where the 2 in 20 comes from, from private equity. It comes up with the fact that KKR didn't have the 25% to put in, like on most oil deals. They only had 20. Can you imagine private equity firms today if KKR actually had the money and they were doing, you know, 30 and 3 or 25 and 2 and a half? Like, the fact that they only had 2 and 20, that kind of tells you everyone in the world could have way more money if KKR could have planned out this whole deal better, but they didn't. So 2 and 20 is what they're known for, and everyone has taken that playbook and, they've been, and they put it out there because private equity didn't exist back then. They were the founders of it. They were, they were deciding on how they were going to borrow money and leverage the company against it. And down that road in the 80s, because of Reaganomics and the lighter restrictions on the financial world right they actually took out a lot of the regulations for finance because you know let's face it the 80s you're battling inflation and you're battling these times uh greed came in and with the greed came the come the snakes and that's when you saw guys like Taryn Pizer and Mike Milken and you, you saw them all the problem is they all got greedy and they all wanted to make money so they started manufacturing the outcomes they started doing insider trading. 
what companies are merging, give me the heads up, making bets on that, then putting people on the board of directors to crumble the company from within. Hey, go make a bad decision. We'll pay you a premium to be on that board of directors. That's where you see these executives come out. And it's never changed since then. So from the 80s till now, when you see private equity get into your company, there's the LP putting all this money into the GP. The GP's out there putting out their bets, but they're also planting their people so that their bets become true and sincere and real. Now, other frac other factions actually jump in on this and they make portions on these points uh, of what the LPs put in. And there's money out there, guys. And it's not that like there's like a, a million people betting on the short side or a million people in private equity. No, it's just like 15 investors. But they're huge. They're pension plans. They're billionaires. And they're the ones putting in. So when they're paired up and you see it on the, on the dotted line, you got to know what you're up against, guys. You really do. So them planning it out this way, and planning on failing and planning their people. They hire consulting firms to double dip to ensure that it, it like layers the layer of guilt. And I'll give you this example. They'll hire Boston Consulting Group, right? And they'll come into your company and they'll reevaluate the whole thing. They'll audit everything. They'll look at it and they'll be like, you know what? I'm your consulting group. You're paying me $20 million a month. But let me tell you what's going to happen with your company. I think you should expand and I think you should cut and I think you should do like they tell you the whole playbook, what you should do all with the idea of you failing because that's what they were hired for you to do. And they actually get points for this. If you look at the structure and how they get paid out. So. It's not a myth. And then they have. They have this thing, right? Private equity firms. They have this thing called PREF. They call it the PREF, the preferential. And the PREF is the amount of percentage that the LP and the GPs agree on. Like if you're, if you're a good GP, right, general partner, you walk up, you're Kathy Woods, okay? You're running your firm. And you go up and you go, listen, invest money with me. Here's the deal. I'm not going to take a commission. I'm not going to take any pay at all off of what we earn until you earn back 10%. So the pref will be 10, and then you'll say, well, 10 plus 2, meaning you get the first 10, I get the next 2, and every 5 after that, I get 2 on top of that. So now your 2 and 20 just turned into, and now your 20 and 2 just turned into, just turned into 20 and 2 plus, past the 10, and then 2, 2, 2. So now you're going to go 8, 10, 12, depending on how much you actually get back for these people, and... What happens is you tell them they got to lock up their money five to 10 years. Let's just say it's a 10-year fund. Well, the 10-year fund that you raised and you got $10 billion off of it, Kathy Wood, she's going to go in there and she's going to be able to play with your money for 10 years. But she, off of, off of $10 billion, right? But she's going to take her 2% uh, up front. So 2% on it, right? 2% on this damn thing is going to be what off of a $10 billion? It's going to be $200 million. So that's what she's going to get that year. And then all of the profits, it being 20%, but yet you get the first 10, I get the next 10. Well, they're going to figure it out and they're going to have an agreement. But either way, they're going to make hundreds of millions of dollars off of you over the next 10 years. And they know it. So what happens when it gets closer to the tail end of the fund? We're almost at year eight, year nine, year 10. We've bought into these bad deals. We've bought into these deals that were upside down. They find another private equity firm to buy those deals, to buy the bad deal. This is why bankrupt companies get passed around to other companies. They just pass them around. They go, you know what? I got six months. I got to get out of this deal right now. Let's show some profits. Hey, come here. Silver Lake, come here. Give me some money. Put it on here so I can get up out of this deal. I can get my money out of that bond position. I can get my money out of that top line, bottom line. They do this. They just pass it around. Then when the date's up, boom, they're gone. They go raise another fund. Hey, I just showed you a profit. We all got rich together off of this. This other hedge fund took the bath on it. It's okay because we're going to buy it back from them. And the whole theory on buying it back from them is, is that the executives themselves are getting fees and bonuses for doing it. That's why it's, it's just taking money from people. Their idea is to go public eventually, and when they do go public, they rake it in initially. 
Then they re-ring it out. They rinse and repeat it. They do all of this. The shareholders, the market, hey, hi. You just don't make shit. You better just go park your money into mutual funds and into these, these equities that just, you know, get about 4 or 5%. Don't get greedy on me. Don't go pick individual securities. Don't do it that way. Or, or you educate yourself and you understand the landmines and you know what to avoid. You know how to invest. You know who, which companies have zero private equity, which companies have a plan, which companies can produce 10x, 20x, depending on what you, where you're at in your entry. You want to tell me I don't know entry points? How about I'm at GameStop at 18 bucks? Yesterday, I bought it at 17. The day before, I bought it at 16. Like, I, I mean, what about entry there? There's just too much information that you guys don't do enough uh, homework on. And you guys want to tell me you're bullshit. You want to talk about your position. Like, I'm in this. I'm in Apple. Therefore, I got a million dollars in Apple. Therefore, it's okay for me to go and put 20 grand in a bed, bath, and beyond, sit in a chat channel of a failed YouTuber and pump it out to thousands of people and help them lose their money. Because you've got a million dollars in Apple. That makes it okay. No, you're guilty of peddling the bullshit, the manipulation, and the myth. And, and that's why we're here. That's why I have a platform. This kid's still talking about whatever he's talking about. Gravis, I don't care how much money you have. I don't care where you've worked in your past. You're shallow. You're shallow of a man because you keep coming back here every day, and yet you pump Bed Bath & Beyond. That stock is over. That company is over. It's a figment of your imagination. Kind of like your success. And there you go. I hope you guys are learning stuff up there. Um, here's what he says. He says, can you give me... Let me read this really quick. It says, can you give me a tip slash start? What should I be doing with my 401k as far as investments? Well, that's cool. Um, depending on which brokerage you're with on a 401k, they have they have stronger, uh, more aggressive funds. If they have a fund and they pick a projected date for you, um, i.e. 2065, something like that, you're in that range, uh, it's cool. If you're just starting out, whatever it may be. I would encourage you to do it this way. I would tell you to live within your means and increase your 401k to max, 20%. Put in 20% of your funds. Because you can only put in, I believe, 19500 a year. So try to get there. Try to put in uh, 19500 every year. Put in the most you can. And learn to live off of half of your paycheck. And people are going to tell you, you can't do that in this day and age. And I'm going to tell you, you can. Because you're sitting there on a $1,000 cell phone watching TikTok or watching YouTube. You can afford to put money away. You just don't know how to do it. You're shopping beyond your means. You're eating beyond your means. When I go to when I go to McDonald's, I get two for four bucks. I get the two McDoubles, nothing else. That's it. No fries, no sauce, no meal, nothing. Two McDoubles. And I managed to make it through with five bucks. I could do that five times a week. I'm good. And I'm telling you right now, I'm saving money because you're going to spend... $15 every value meal, and you're going to eat two of them a day, and that's going to be six, this going to be $30 a day, times the seven days of the week. You just spent $210. Now you spend $840 in a month, and you're going to tell me that $850 on fast food, but you had to do it because you know what? I got to eat. Bullshit. I can do it for a third of that. Now your $850 in food turned into $250, and guess what you get to do with the $250 you spend in food? I'm being real with you. You can take the additional 600, park it away into your 401k. Do that. Let me know. How I'm just talking food. We can go to the next step. Entertainment, gas. I mean, you know how many years, guys, I rode the bus? I rode public transportation for about four years here in California, which is unheard of. Cost me a dollar to go from Palm Springs to La Quinta, which was around 45-minute drive. And I would do it on the bus every day there and back why because my daughter needed a car to drive to work 
and I wasn't going to make her ride the bus. I wasn't going to have her juggle for rides. I literally said, take the car, babe. I'll, I'll walk. I'll take the bus. We didn't have the luxuries that I have now where we have multiple cars and a good life. Back then, I was grinding. I was grinding. Fuck, man. Oh. But I would take the bus for a dollar way each way. I have zero pride when it comes to it. I don't care. I don't care what I look like, what I wear. I don't care what the shoes I wear, how my hair looks, my sh- clothes I wear. I don't care about any of that stuff. I'm the worst. I don't care about my car. I don't care what anything looks like. I'm No. I don't need it. I don't need the flashy. I'm the last guy for it. I promise you. And anyone that knows me knows that. Because that money I've been putting away, they're going to come looking for me. They're going to come looking for me. I tell my kids, too, you might be taking care of them if I pass away, but this ain't no Menendez brother situation. You don't want to kill me to rake it in. I apologize. You don't want to do it that way because I'm worth a lot more alive than I am dead. I've got a million-dollar plan. I've got a million-dollar idea, and it's called YouTube, TikTok, Marantz Rants, Rico Knows, whatever it is that we're out there talking about, my brother and I, this is taking over the internet is one thing. Educating yourself is another. But doing it the right way, not taking from the people, not pushing out bullshit. You don't see me peddling your bullshit. I'm not going to do it, guys. I'm not. I'm not going to tell you join Moo Moo app and, and download this app and join this for this chat. And do all. I'm not doing any of that. I never will. Keep your money. Hold it. Respect it. I was at Dave & Buster's last night. It was... Um, it was a grand opening, VIP grand opening, and I got to go in there early and eat all the food and all the drinks were free and the games were free. And I won a whole bunch of tickets, whole bunch of tickets. My wife says, here, give me all that. We'll save it for your son when he comes next week. Said, Shit, my son's going to be loaded. He's going to have all this stuff he gets to do. I don't care. I don't need the tickets. What the hell am I going to do with these stuff, stuffed dolls and shit? I'm not Rico. I don't sleep with stuffed animals. So I, I do all that. And it was all you can eat. Guys, I probably ate five plates. And I'm not ashamed. I was the right. dude. I'm going to talk to you in a minute. I was the dude walking around eating all the food. Asking for seconds and thirds and fourths. Because if you're going to give me free food. And I don't have to pay for it. I'm in hog heaven. I'm the best guy for it. You need me at an all-you-can-eat buffet. In the chat right now, I have five people here. We're going to go down this list, and I'll talk to them each. First up is going to be Matrix Trader. Matrix Trader, how are you doing today, Matrix? No? No Matrix? Matrix Trader, I said Rico sleeps with stuffed animals, a.k.a. his Yo, girlfriend. yo, yeah. yo. What's up, Matrix? I'm here. Not much, bro. Hey, man, uh, you should talk about more about uh, Wayfair and how they're connected with Bain Capital. <laughs> Wayfair, Bain Capital. Uh, I have my own I, issues uh, with, with Wayfair. Um, if you know the original creator of Wayfair, original CEO, he left the company. Private equity came in and he left and he's now at Volution Capital. So um, uh, I, I could do a connecting the dots on that. I could. But uh, there's just so yeah. much so much that's off the books, if you know what I mean. I don't know if you know about yeah. them ordering children off of Wayfair. Um, yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> yeah, it's not, a t- it's not a subject I'd rather touch on this channel. I'm not trying to get myself yeah. murdered. No, no worries. Yeah, I, I yeah. thought that that would be a pretty good um, video to make uh, for for your Connected the Dots series. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, I never know what video I'm going to make on Connecting the Dots. I never know, dude. Somebody always sends me a message, just like you right now at Wayfair, and then if I feel triggered or I feel like what I'm going with, I just go. And I've started so many episodes that I never finished. I have one right now about well, Clover, yeah. Clover Health. I never finished it. And I'm in it. I'm deep into that one where I was reading. I had the same thing with MMTLP. Never finished it. And I was reading about it and everything. And people ask me, Marantz, what about this? What about that? I just don't know, guys. I don't know what I'm going to do next. But I know what I'm going to do every day other than what I do do, uh, GameStop. 
actually, yeah, no worries. But I thought I thought that would be a pretty good series for your connected dot series. That's cool. I really appreciate that. But with that being said, guys, I've got to get up. I'm going to take a quick break. I will be back. I'm not leaving the chat. I'm not leaving the channel. But uh, I'll be right back. So um, if you guys don't know what family business is, it's exactly what I call this because uh, you know I got my GameStop family and they're here. Appreciate you guys. I'll be right back. GameStop can't stop, won't stop. GameStop. Look at the chart. We're looking healthy. 1832 on GameStop today. Over. Uh, it looks like almost three million shares traded back and forth. But I'll be right back. And it's just family business. Yo, I said all these things. Welcome back. Welcome back to my rants, rants. Plenty of good information. A little bit of motivation. Whole lot of truth. No financial advice to all my cats out there on TikTok saying I sound like Rico knows. You don't know. Sound nothing like my bro. But I'm here. And right now, GameStop, H28. I see we have the shills in the chat. You know, I haven't messed with the chat that much today, but I have more of these guys in the phone call that I got to talk to. Right now, I have Dr. Steve. Dr. Steve, if you're there, the mic is yours. The floor is yours. Dr. Steve, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I uh, just want to say thank you for everything that you're doing, uh, pushing out the message out there. Uh, I see you're growing a channel. Only found you about two weeks ago, but, Ooh. man, you're perfect. That sucks, you get, man. You get the message across, man. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm hoping more people see it. Um, been in GameStop since you know the early on January sweep. I right. believe in it. Um, I always felt the markets were unfair, and uh, this is just exposing it. Story that's been going on for a while, and um, coming out there. So, Doctor Steve, I have a question. You know, you've been in it for so long. Um, and I just want to say thank you for the support, but um. What? Why? Why didn't? Why do you think you didn't find me beforehand? Um, I'm not too sure. Um, I really don't go on social media that much. Uh, you popped up one day. Um, I don't know what happened all of a sudden, but now I just see you everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's pretty fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, like man. I said, I think you're the perfect guy. You got the con. You, you know what you're talking about. You're educating people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, we we did this together. A great job. I just, thank you, man. I just need to say that to you, man. It means a lot to me. Trust me. I have days where I'm like, you know, doubting myself. Uh, not that you guys would ever know. I don't have the self doubt that way. But um, when you see the growth in other people and other things, it really question. You really question like how it's all happening for you. Um, that's that's just how it is. Yeah. You, you know you're right. You know what you're talking about. Uh, you tell people around you they're not listening. Even when it happens, I mean, don't feel down when people. Even though you're right, don't feel down. Yeah, no, people I appreciate aren't gonna that. say, "Yeah, man, you were right." Should have listened to you. They're they're not gonna. It's it's just how life goes. Yeah, so I guess I gotta I gotta people. focus on mine, and stay in my lane and keep going that way. But trust me, I see other channels growing. I see other people, um, clout chasing, and they're so excited about what they're doing. And I think like how long we've been doing this, and it's hard to be on the right side of things because it's so easy to to slide on the back of it, you know, to promote things. And uh, I was going to tell a story and I got thrown off on it. Um, but you just reminded me right now. It was the Toys R Us story. You know, the the thing that I heard KKR do in an interview, they said that one of the worst investments was Toys R Us. And I thought they were like giving a backhanded compliment to the way it went down. But now that I know what I know about private equity, I could see right through it. They literally were making an announcement to say it was a bad deal. Yet it wasn't because if people knew that Amazon was going to be so successful and people promote Amazon to be successful, help them, that then in turn kills other companies. So when I saw private equity helping out Jeff Bezos indirectly, like what they did with Toys R Us, like what they did with Blockbuster, they started calling the demise of numerous companies, you know, category killers, linens and things, Claire's, all companies that were obsolete. And you allowed one to thrive. I think this is what they figured out, that if I push out Amazon and let them be the best and help them be the best, I'm going to make money off the downfall of everything else. So that's the push. They lost when it came to Chewy. They lost when it came to GameStop. So... I'm very excited for what's coming. I know we're fighting the real fight. I know people don't understand because they think it's a short battle. We're battling the hedge funds, the short hedge funds. We're not. Uh, if you're buying a share of GameStop, you're fighting private equity. And I'm with that. And I'm going to be 
that David versus Goliath moment. But just remember, like I said, it's biblical. Uh, David cut off Goliath's head and walked around town for three days just to show everyone who the fuck he was. And I'm going to do the same damn thing when GameStop rockets. I'm going to be here and I'm going to tell you exactly who I am. And it's who I have been from day one. So appreciate you, brother. And I always will. Right on. Thank you so much, man. Yes, sir. I had one more guy in the chat. I don't know if, he, uh, if there's other people clicking on the link that we put there in the Discord. Um, Matrix Trader, I know we were talking before. What's going on, Matrix? What you got going on? No? No? You're not there? Cool. I saw that uh, the Gravis left and Terry showed up. And Terry said, when are you going to do a live stream of you getting blanked by Roaring Kitty? That me and the AMC apes would love to see that. What is it that you're not seeing now, Terry? Adam Aaron's doing it to you, which you're insinuating that you want to see Roy and Kitty do to me. But Adam Aaron's doing it to you. Why do you want to see it happen? Don't you like to feel it happen? Apparently. Oh, anyway. Where's the Ryan Coin Foam 4? Good question. I was reading some stuff over here, guys. Apologize. AMZ stuff I was reading. I apologize. You know. Let's see. Are they going to drop a Form 4 in the after hours? I mean, I don't know. Why did I type in AMC again? What the hell? Here we go. GME. Don't forget to click on the link, guys. If you guys want to join the chat and the channel at any time, you can talk to me. Tell me how you feel about life. Tell me you hate me. Tell me you love me. I don't care. I'll talk it out with you. If you're a bear... For GameStop, let me know, and we'll talk that out, too. We'll see how good you guys are. We can fight at any time. I'm um, getting a lot of messages here, direct messages, which is cool. Uh, I don't mind. I don't know who's sending me messages, though. Oh, there it is, message request. Yeah, okay, so that's what he asked for. So he asked for a connect the dots on Wayfair. I can. I can and I should. We'll see. Okay, but in your research, have you found that it's a good board of balance sheet? Thanks. Oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> People are watching the channel. People are getting most of the info that they've been missing for the last four years. But we've been here the whole time. This thing of ours, GameStop, strong as F. Yes. Let's go to the Cowboys 17-0. and 0. See, I'm not the only one who believes that. Thank you so much. Funny Spider, shout out to you. Kevin Ike says, when Frankie Mohammed finger Moas video. Well, I don't know why people are pumping out Chinese stocks. I'll never be one. Hell, I wouldn't even buy Alibaba back in the day when it was pumping. Um, I'm not a promoter of Chinese companies. I'm not. And not their stocks either. So there's nothing more red, white, and blue than me. That's just who I am by nature. So, nah, I'm good. Nah, don't go poking around there, bro. Um, yeah, okay. Cool. Ryan Cohen and our awesome board are making GameStop great again. Rants just spit facts. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Make GameStop great again. I'm down with that. Morantz worked with JPM to create a... If Morantz made a Project Popcorn. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I did nothing. Um, you know nothing about Mamba. <laughs> uh, Vinny. Vinny, chances are you don't own a, a Kobe Bryant jersey or whatever maybe. I don't even care what you say, bro. You can't tell me I don't know anything about Kobe Bryant. I was at work when I was told it was a Sunday, January 26th. I was there. And, uh, yeah, unbelievable. Rocked my world. I know plenty about Kobe Bryant. I'm a huge fan. Uh, it says, Morantz uses TikTok owned by a Chinese government. Yeah, or maybe I use it for them so that I can use it to promote something. Maybe I'm using their evil against them. Does that make sense? Doesn't mean I'm invested in it, right? Kid, what is it? What, what do you think? If my wife was Chinese, would I, would I strangle her first just to prove the point that I'm really against this stuff? No. You're an idiot. Ugh, this guy. Did you come back, though, Gravis? You said you left, and now you're back. Guess who's back? Back again. Gravis is back. He has no friends. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Gravis? They collect your info. Good. 
They're going to find out that I'm a goddamn man. He doesn't own trans, uh, Tencent, which owns TikTok. Not to mention, they're the number one investors into, uh, let's see, Riot Gaming. Hello, I play League of Legends. Maybe they have my information already. They're a huge investor into um, that other game. Uh, what's the game? Fortnite. The huge investors with KKR. Yeah, private equity driven. Everybody has my info. Google has my info. They know where I'm at right now. Oh, don't stop me. I took a break. That's what you call it? No problem. But I know nothing about Mamba. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, GameStop guys currently doing amazing things. But I'm looking at the ownership disclosures. There's none that have uh, increased. I do want to know who bought the shares from AMC. No one has announced that yet. I'm looking for a 13D, 13G, 13F. I'm looking for all of the... Uh, all of the possible transactions that could have happened on AMC. But I'll get the final report maybe in like two weeks, two to three weeks, and then we'll know who bought them. Uh, that's where I'm going at with that. I saw that Tucker Carlson released episode 24 on t on Twitter. So if you ever want to watch that, you can. I know I, you know, I watch Tucker. Tucker's a good guy. I don't watch all his episodes, but you know, when I do, it makes him pretty smart. I see this Mexican rapper, Dansor. Surgically implanted gold chains into his head to serve as his hair. I don't know what to tell you about these kids, but they'll do anything for a click and a view. Kind of sounds like those other idiots talking about terrible investments. Yeah, these guys are crazy. I'm reading stuff right now. It's go time. Leans are removed. Let's get it. So Bed Bath & Beyond, for whatever reason, <laughs> thinks that they're going to go up. And I'm telling you, the shares are going to get canceled. Bed Bath & Beyond shares are going to get canceled, guys. When does that movie come out? The movie comes out, Steve. And hey, shout out to you, Steve. Thanks for uh, supporting me on TikTok. Um, the movie comes out tonight at select movie theaters and everywhere in the world next week. So, Jeezy has filed for divorce from Janie May after two years of marriage. I don't know who it is, but um, yeah, now that she's single, finger, nice insider, top sell. The AMC machine is printing. So the insider sold at Finger. Go figure. They acquired 88 and then they disposed at $7.74. They sold 43,000 shares. Phenomenal. That's great. That's great. People don't understand. I don't understand how people still invest money into things that they don't know and touch. You've never heard of the company. You've never seen it, but you're just going to go touch it. you would be like, yeah, let me go buy some of that because everyone else is doing it. It's the dumbest shit ever. Everyone else is not everyone else. Like people, if they only knew, there's not real people. TikTok is not real. YouTube is not real. Twitter is not real. Reddit's not real. You don't know who they are. I don't know if there's five different people acting like one. I don't know the difference. Judge Kaplan confirms the plan on Bed Bath & Beyond. Yes. No language about amendments, modifications have been removed or changed. The effective date has not been pub uh, publicly disclosed, uh, publicly disclosed. And welcome to the end game. Yeah. They give you, what, 14 days, bro. Yep. They laid out the plan. Holly Etlin said she wanted this affected ASAP. So effective date could be as early as next week. Wow. Absolutely wow. The world will be saved, but will you? New characters, locations, thrilling combat, and even mini games featured as Cloud and his comrades uh, journey across the planet in search of Sephiro in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Launching February 29, 2024 on PlayStation 5. Final Fantasy VII <laughs> Rebirth. Holy hell, guys. I don't know what to tell you guys. It's probably my favorite game playing growing up. Final Fantasy VII on PlayStation. But they have a new one, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And yeah, it's a whole new thing. I'm down to play it. I'm down to watch it. Uh, it sounds amazing, honestly. There goes your girl, Tara Bull, giving you the top 10 headlines. Thanks, Tara. Appreciate you. Oh, 
and it's all political driven. She's the worst, bro. Ty, you guys want to know the worst grifter? It was her. I was asking the the real questions about dumb money during an ask me anything today. Oh, were you? Did they um? Did they block you too? They blocked everyone else. Remember Twitter? This is how stupid this is now. Feel stupid yet? Exactly. Twitter was amazing. Twitter was amazing. What happened to it? Uh, Elon went out here and named it after his son. I don't even know his son's real name, but news alert: BlackRock exposed caught secretly investing four hundred twenty-nine billion in the Chinese military through associated companies. BlackRock is evil. Well, we know that part. That's Lawrence Fink. We said that part. These guys are not good people. I mean, it's private equity. What do you want to do? What do you guys want to do? What do you guys want to listen to? Is that me? Oh, somebody retweeted that. Okay, cool. I had no idea. All right, I'm done off of Twitter. I'm just reading some headlines. See what's out there. Back to the chat. Back to you. Ten free memberships again. For anyone in the chat, you guys grab them so fast, man. Congratulations to the people who got that. Costco just opened in China. What's that got to do with me, bro? What, does the company speak for me? No. If you want to support TikTok, there you go. Bro, it's going to be one of the usual suspects for sure. Mudrick, Silver Lake, and Tura. Just line them up and pick one. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Probably Wanda again. You just never know, guys. I don't either. This is why I appreciate you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. Um, Reek, did you ever say what part of Texas you were moving to? Uh, Nat Cole, I don't know who, uh, where Rico's moving to. We don't talk like that. I got nothing to talk to him about, bro. He just calls me when he calls me and we talk like that, but not that wild. Uh, Rico knows. I'm not Rico knows. Um, I'm his twin brother. Sure. Yeah, I'm. people are texting me right now not realizing that I'm live. I'm not going to answer my phone. There you go. Just talking now. Uh, let me read. Okay, so 10 people got the free memberships. Thank you so much for what you do. Uh, Badass Trader even got one. What do you know? Dan the Man, Danny Finnegan, D Diaper Don, everybody. Rats, I was so close. Ha uh, Hag Puppy, you were so close. Yeah, exactly. But you know, you guys can always uh, buy your own or buy some for someone. You can always donate to the channel that way. Uh, that just helps support the movement, supports the cause and what we do. And um, keeps me on my feet, man. I'm just telling you guys. I don't do it for a living, but I do do it as a passion. And it's a great hobby of mine. And hopefully you guys find value in it. And I'll keep providing the info I can. Uh, Kyoto says he will not be able to catch up in live stream today, but he will watch it later. Uh, you know, he's on kid duty tomorrow, so they're good. Kyoto, shout out to you in Japan. Uh, as you guys know, this show is international. Plenty of people across the world is out there. DV posted on Morant's stream once. I think he watches Morant's. Well, there you go, Vinny. Um, yeah, Morant's posted the video on his channel. There you go. And, uh, yeah, you guys are doing great. <laughs> it wasn't the real DFV after we looked. Morant's addressed that later. That is true, Linda Rowe. I did, but I was going to let them tell the story. You know, there's myths out there. I just let them tell the myth. What do I got to do with it? I still believe Roaring Kitty is in this Discord. Maybe even Pete Davidson. This place will have everyone one day. Oh, I can. Who knows? I just try not to push it out to the masses too much. But it's there. Another buy order in the Discord, guys. People keep buying in, as always. Uh, I bought in uh, yesterday and the day before. I did not buy in today. So remember when I told you last week, guys, I was here in the chat with, with the crew. And I said, hey, man, um, Marantz is X big. He claims to be your neighbor. Do you guys uh, ever hang? No, we've had the ability to do it. And um, we've talked about it because Lord knows I want to have a X bit. I want to have a Philly cheesesteak from the Alco Bar with you brother but i'm broke right now guys when i say i'm broke right now i don't think you guys understand okay i get paid next week and it, today is friday i don't get paid till wednesday i gotta go about five days and these next five days i probably have about 150 dollars to my name maybe 140 i'm down it's okay no i'm just like you all right guys listen my bills are paid all right this is my excess money. This is my bullshit money that I, I'm going to eat lunch with and get gas with. Thing is, I drive my son to school an hour every day, to and from. So I take him to the best school possible for him, and we drive, we talk, and I got to buy him food. So right now, when I end the live stream, I got to go pick him up. It costs me money, players. So I'm out there fractioning that money. But that's my, that's my GameStop money. I got to figure it out, but I'm going to have a lot more come Wednesday. Oh, baby, the next three weeks are going to be an amazing time for me. 
Um, my wife and I are going to have a blast. Um, I don't care how unhappy she can be with me at times. Uh, if she's mad about like me not doing the dishes or me not taking out the trash or doing the cat litter boxes, I do everything you guys do. Guys, let me tell you something. I woke up this morning, got my son up, got him dressed for school, took him, got home, cut the grass, got back in, took my dad to breakfast, got back in, took a shower, got ready for the show, doing the show, going to end the show, drive back, pick him up from school, feed him, get home, clean the house before my wife gets home. It's Friday. Then I got to be up in the morning because I work at 2 a.m. tomorrow. My day doesn't stop. But somewhere in there, I got to find time for videos, updates, info, Costco, GameStop, all the stocks that we talk about, everything. Fuck. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for supporting the channel. I'm fucking drained. I'm dead. But when I find time to hang out with the expert, I will. Yes. Always thank you for what you do for us, man. All dude, much love. Thank you so much. Glad I don't have kids. More money for GameStop. Bunny Spider, I got five, bruh. I got five. I got five on it. Got it. Good. Um, you're not you're not Rico knows. You shave. Sure. Yeah, these guys. You know, TikTok's never gonna figure it out. Honestly, guys, TikTok's never gonna figure it out. Look, like, you gotta be Rico. If I could be, I could be like Mike like Mike. If I could be like Mike, to be like Mike. Morantz, this month I get paid three times. Guess we um, guess where that money is going. Lynn ML. Not only do I get paid three times this month, okay? I also next the first paycheck of next month, I get my annual bonus. And I'm senior manager and uh, the bonus is great. I get my bonus. Okay? So I get paid three times and my bonus. Ha <laughs> Woo shit. I had a list of things I was going to buy, okay? Let me tell you guys something. I had a list. I told my wife, baby, I want a new gun. Babe, I want to get new cameras. Babe, I want to get new... This. I said all this stuff. A, a power washer, a new power washer, a new lawnmower, a new... This. I was naming all this stuff. And my wife's like, that's fine. What's my cut? I said, whatever I have left after. It's yours. I don't care. GameStop's at $18 a share. <laughs> shit. I was like, I ain't buying none of that shit. Swear to God, I'm borrowing lawnmower for the neighbor. I'll fight the next dude that comes at me instead of shoot him. I don't need cameras. I got cats and dogs. And I'm going to be the lookout myself. I don't need a power washer. I'm just going to drive around my dirty truck. And I got my own power washer, my thumb, and the water hose. What else do you want me to tell you? I ain't paying off nothing. I'm just going to buy more GameStop shares. The hell with these cats. I got all the money. Let's go. Do you think dumb money could have a positive effect on GameStop? Sure, Daniel. Depending on how stupid they make us look in that movie. Thanks for the memberships, Mike Hawksmall. You're welcome. You almost have the name like Smallbone, bro. It's kind of kind of scary. They raised the prices at the alcohol bar. Did they, bro? Shit. I'll still go. Philly cheesesteak over there is just... I went to a little shop called Kennedy's today. And they have burritos and they make them right there for you. I thought it was rather over... It was, it was a good price... But it was like over hyped up. It was hyped up because everybody's like, "Oh, they got the best burritos. You gotta go." And I went, and I was just like, "My wife makes better burritos, bro. It's whatever." But it's cool. I get paid once a month. Well, welcome to it, bro. I'm telling you right now. You guys wait. Is it the bell? That's the bell. There it is. We made it to the to the final bell. GameStop shot up right now. Holy shit! What is that? Look at that candle. Oh my god! Look at that. Bro, somebody on a Friday wanted to do this. Yo, forget all that nonsense. Mullen Automotive up 19% today, up to 68 cents. Is GameStop going to run right now in the after hours? What announcement are they going to make after hours? I need to know. I need to know. This thing's got to come back down, right? It can't do this. Big ass green can. It can't do that. What's happening here? Okay, I was going to leave, but let me figure this out. Holy shit. You seen that? Can you guys see that? Oh, my God. All right. So came down a little bit. All right. Came back down to earth. Let me wait a couple more minutes. Let me see what happens. Actually, I have a I have a thing I can do called the second. I can look at the seconds on the intervals. Um, I can do every five seconds. Look at that shit. Look at that candle, bro. 
Look at that shit. Now it's flat. Okay. Ooh, bro, look at that. Something ain't right. There's crime out there in them there hills. Look at that shit. Oh, man, it's falling. Look at that. Oh, that's the volume. That was the volume. Look at that. Way up there at the top. The tick, tick, tick. And then you can go like this. You go there, and then you go, um, how do I do it? I think you have to go line chat. Line, right? If I go, not the indicators. Double bottom, technical bottom, all that shit. I don't care about that stuff. Boom, no. So that's on the second chart. I'm going to go to the five second chart. It's still flat. All right, nothing went down. We're good. It was just some crazy shit at the end of the end of the week. So that's the end of the week, guys, for GameStop. Looking great. We love the stock, if you guys know what it is. I mean, I've loved this stock since the day I ever saw it. That's the minute chart. Not bad today. Pop back up. It's up right now, one penny. As long as it doesn't run. If it runs, I'll come back to the live. If not, I'm out. That's it. Same shit will happen in two weeks. Yep. That was the 19 shares I just bought. Brady, pumping it, babe. Did you see the open candle this morning? I didn't see it. Was it all the way up? Let me go look at it. Real quick. Yeah. That shit? Wow. That's healthy. That's gorgeous. Look at the amount of volume. And then they just try to shoot it back down. Popped it up. Boom, boom, boom. And then we closed out hard. Pause. Look at that shit right there. That's beautiful. What are they going to do? One day when the volume comes to this stock, what are they going to do? I'm going to be nervous, bro. I'm going to be shitting them pants, bro. All right, for all you guys on TikTok, I'm going to still hang out with you guys. But for you guys on YouTube, it's been real. It's been awesome. But I got to get take off. I got stuff to do. I'm going to play some League of Legends on my own. Play some music. Have a good time out here. Thank you guys so much. GameStop. Can't stop. Won't stop. GameStop. Thank you for all the support in the chat and the channel. Shout out to Funny Spider, Ruben, obviously, Stax, the whole crew, Chad. Chad, I see you're out there trying to take over, hostile takeover. Appreciate you. And Lemon, you're a bitch. You always will be. GameStop. Can't stop, won't stop. GameStop. I'm going to see you around, millionaires. Peace. <laughs>